Hey there, fellow digital DJs. This is Ian Golden with DJ Tech Tools, and today we are going to look at beat grids inside of Tractor, what used to be called Tractor DJ Studio, and now is just Tractor. Um, basically, when Tractor analyzes a song, it creates this overview of sort of uh, hash marks, as they're called, which indicates the peak of a waveform where there most likely is a beat. Tractor uses these marks to figure out A, what the BPM of the song is, and B, to help you automatically drop synchronized loops in time. However, in breakdowns and in songs with, with um, more difficult rhythmic material, you're going to need to drop a beat marker and perfect a beat grid to really define the exact um, BPM of the song and make sure all your loops are perfect every time. In order to quickly do this, I've created a set of hotkeys for you that will get us through the process more efficiently. If you go to djtechtools.com and take a look at this post, quickly set up perfect beat grids, you can go ahead and download um, these presets automatically, or there's a list of what you need to do here. And then if you go back into Tractor, go up to the settings window, into the hotkey and MIDI setup, hotkey setup, you can load my list here or go ahead and just include um, or implement these into your own list so you don't lose your previous settings. Once that's all set up, we can go ahead and take a peek at how this works. Now the hotkeys are set up across the top of the keyboard, so you can use two hands. On the left side, we've got drop a cue, drop a beat marker, unlock or lock a beat marker, and then while we're dropping those, over here we've got move the grid right, move the grid left, pause, and play. So here's how that works. First we need to set a beat marker. I like to do this on a snare because then it has the best chance of lining up with other songs. I'll use the nudge button to figure out just where the top of that snare is and then drop the beat marker there. You'll notice that now all these lines have shifted. If I unlock the beat marker, the hash marks are on the peaks. With the beat marker, the grid has now changed. It's now been created based on the start point of here, and it's laid across the whole song um, based on the tempo that it thinks the track is. So in order to perfect this grid, we need to adjust the tempo. First, we'll just go through and take a look. Notice that as we get further along, the hash mark or the beat grid and the actual grid of the song are starting to go further and further apart. All we need to do is use the move grid right key and we'll go ahead and nudge that up against those lines. There we go. Move a little bit further down into the song. Looks like we went just a little bit too far, so we'll bump that back a couple notches until we get to the very end of the song, and there it should be perfect. There it is. Double check by just going back through the song to make sure everything's still good, and it is. We have a perfect beat grid. Now we can drop a loop at anywhere in the song, and it'll be perfectly in time. Next, we want to drop some cue markers. A beat marker is a great way to keep your track in time, but we want to visually see what's happening in the song without knowing, without hearing it first. For this, I use cue points. Let's drop a cue point on the first beat. Again, I want to make sure that if I play this, it's right on the top of that rhythm. So I'm going to use the three button to lock that and move on to the next one. I actually want to change that though. I don't want a regular cue marker, which is indicated by the blue. I want to go ahead and make that a load marker, which will mean that each time this song is loaded into Tractor, each time I pull it into this deck, it will directly load to that point, so I won't need to find it again. Very helpful. Next, I want to find the point in the song where something happens. We've got the beat intro, so I'm mixing, I'm mixing. Where does the music come in? Right there. So as it was playing, I dropped a cue point on time and then locked it. Let's go ahead and find the next point where some other change comes into the song.
There it is. So I always check my cue points to make sure that um, it's at a rhythmic point where if I were to either juggle it or jump quickly to that point, it's gonna uh, make sense and it's gonna play correctly. Which is a good spot there. Um, now I know this song has got some vocals at some point. So if I'm dropping an acapella over this instrumental, I wanna know, I want a visual reference that I need to get out by this point. So let's try and find that vocal track. Okay, so there it is. That is, now, if we wanna really give myself a clear visual marker of that's a point where I need to be either done mixing or not, um, either, either maybe I need to be out of the track, I can change that marker to an out, which gives me this red indicator saying, hey bud, you need to be out of the mix by that point. So we've got our out marker, and then we'll drop one more cue point at the breakdown in case I wanna jump directly to that spot. Oh, missed it there. So if you play it from a few counts before the breakdown, you can time it and just drop the cue right on the one. I'm gonna shift that a little bit earlier because I didn't drop it quite perfectly on time. There it is. Cool. So now I've got a clear visual reference of where different parts of the songs come in. So I make sure I'm, I'm mixing at the right points, I'm out at the right points. I've got a perfect beat grid laid out. I might drop a loop in advance and lock that. I'll show you how to do that if we just show our loop set um, guy here. Let's say we want to go ahead and drop, you know, like a 16 bar loop at the beginning. First, let's turn snap on. Uh, with snap on, the loop is gonna lock to this grid. With it off, it's gonna lock um, to no grid, just wherever you happen to drop the loop. Both have their advantages. Let's set this to 16 and go ahead and set a loop. Now let's do it here. Now, that's 16 counts right there. You see the loop starts and ends. So that means our whole intro is 32 because that's the first part of the song. That's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and lock that. Now, um, I'm gonna go to my current playlist, sort the song. Here's the song I'm currently playing. And to keep all this information inside of the mp3 so it never gets lost no matter what happens i'm going to go ahead and right click and write file tags usually i do this at the end of a session i'll see clearly i've played these five songs i know that i've prepared those five songs so i'll select all of them right click and write file tags then i make sure that all this work that i've done doesn't get lost in the future. And each time I load these tracks up, they'll be ready to rock and roll, and I won't have to think about it at all. Check back regular at djtechtools.com because we've just got a new forum. And the forum is going really, really well. There's lots of different discussions, lots of people starting all kinds of great threads. Um, and of course the blog itself is always there where each week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I post a new article about different aspects of digital DJing.